Joe Biden has proposed some major changes to our tax laws, which could change how much money you pay in taxes. So if you want to know what's going on, make sure you watch this video until the end. What's up, everybody? I am Just Pradeet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com, where money minds rethink rich. Before Joe Biden came into office, I made a couple of videos talking about his tax proposals. These were things that he was talking about before he actually came into office. And now that he's actually in office, he's made a proposal on things that he wants to change about our tax code, which if they go into effect, could change how much money you pay in taxes. Now, if you want to see what he proposed before he actually came into office, you can watch that video in the description below. Joe Biden's new tax proposals, if they're passed, will change our tax laws in five major areas. First is in the death tax area. This is when you die and you have assets or money that you give to your heirs. This could be your kids or whoever. There's going to be a change in how much money they would pay in taxes based off of what they get from you. Second is income taxes. This is the taxes that you pay on the money that you earn. Third is regulations of the IRS auditing you and your tax preparer. Fourth is corporate taxes. And fifth are your investment taxes, your capital gains taxes. These are the five things that I'm going to be talking about in this video. But before I get into that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below. And I also want to let you know that we have just launched our very own Discord community. So if you want to come talk minority mindset stuff, talk about the stock market, talk about the real estate market, talk about taxes, and see what's going on, you can join our Guac Talk community. Yes, we call it the Guac Talk community. You can join our Guac Talk community on Discord. It is completely free. And I got the link to how you can join our Guac Talk community and chat with other minority mindset thinkers in the description below. Let's start with number one the death tax. So the death tax is not a technical term, it's actually called the estate tax, but people like to call it the death tax because what it is, is if you die or when you die and you pass your assets on to your heirs, your heirs take this assets that you gave them and they may or may not have to pay taxes on these assets. These taxes are known as the death tax or the estate taxes. The way it works is let's say that I'm 20 years old and I got a couple hundred dollars in my pocket and I go out and I start a business. And I start this business and I run this business from the time I'm 20 and until the time I die. And let's assume that this business when I die is worth $100 million. And this is my business. And let's just say this business for the sake of this example is an avocado guacamole business because everybody loves guacamole. So you start this avocado guacamole business, you build it to $100 million and now you die. If you were to die and you gave this business now to your kids, now your kids, let's assume this is one person, let's draw a nice mustache. So your kid now got this free $100 million business. They're going to have to pay taxes on this new gain. But the amount of taxes that they pay is going to change. Because what it used to be in the past is when you die and you give this kid a $100 million company, they get something called stepped up basis, S-U-B, stepped up basis. What that essentially means is when you die, you give them this $100 million business and they get this business and they essentially get to tell the IRS that, hey, I'm buying this business right now for $100 million. Even though they're not actually paying anything for this business, they're getting it for free because you're giving it to them after you die, but they get the stepped up basis. So they get to tell the IRS, hey, I'm buying this business for $100 million. So if you sold this business today, the day after you got it, you would pay taxes of $0 because you bought the business for $100 million and you're selling it for $100 million, right? So you got this business worth $100 million. If you sold it this day, you would pay $0 in taxes. So that's the first layer of tax. That's called capital gains because now you're getting this investment, this asset for $100 million, right? That's what you're telling the IRS and you sell it for $100 million. So you don't pay any tax. If you sold it for more than $100 million, then you get to pay uh, taxes on this profit. But you're telling the IRS that you get it for a stepped up basis at the $100 million price. The second tax is the estate tax. So this is now you're getting this $100 million business. You also have to pay taxes on this $100 million worth of assets that you're getting. As of the time of me recording this video, this estate tax is 40%. So you get this asset, you own it, and as soon as you get it, you're going to have to pay the government 40% of this asset or $100 million. So you'd have to send in $40 million into the IRS 
for taxes for receiving this $100 million business when your parent passed away. This is where things can be a little tricky because if you're just getting a business that's worth $100 million, that doesn't mean that you have $100 million in the bank. This means you have a business that's valued at $100 million. So in order to get this $40 million that you have to pay for this estate taxes, you might be required to sell a portion of your business or to sell a building or to raise some debt or do something to raise this $40 million because just because the business is worth $100 million does not mean it has $100 million in the bank. But this is how it works right now. Joe Biden wants to change this. So the way it currently works, you start a business with next to nothing, you build it up to $100 million, then when you die, you give this business to your family, your family gets this business, and they get to tell the government that they essentially bought the business for $100 million. So they don't have to pay any investment capital gains taxes unless they sell this business for more than $100 million. So capital gains, they pay zero because they get stepped up basis. Then they also have to pay the IRS $40 million in estate taxes because that's just the estate tax that they got $100 million worth of assets. So they got to pay the IRS $40 million here, nothing here. And so you are left in this case with $60 million after paying all the taxes with the current tax plan. Under the Joe Biden plan, your death taxes work very differently. So the first thing Joe Biden wants to do is he wants to get rid of the stepped up basis kind of system right now. And he also wants you to immediately, as soon as you get this property, he wants you to immediately pay capital gains taxes. I'm gonna get to capital gains a little bit later in this video, but the thing that you wanna understand about capital gains taxes is capital gains taxes are taxes you pay on investments. And so in this case, he's saying that as soon as you get this property, you should immediately pay capital gains taxes as soon as you get the property. And second, he also wants to raise capital gains taxes, especially on the wealthy. So in this case, assuming the capital gains taxes get raised to what he wants, and I'll get to that in just a second, immediately the first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to pay $42.96 million in capital gains taxes. Once you do that, then you're gonna have to pay estate taxes after that. So after you pay your capital gains taxes, you're gonna be left with right around $57 million, and then you're gonna be paying the same 40% in estate taxes, and you're gonna pay that on just $57 million. Now you are gonna get some exemptions, you get them here too, and so assuming that estate taxes stay the same at 40%, which is what they look like, then that means you're gonna be paying just over 18 million dollars in estate taxes. Now I know 40% of this is not 18 million, but this is including the exemptions. So you are going to get this $100 million business, then you got to pay 42, 43 million dollars in capital gains taxes, and then you got to pay another 18 million dollars in estate taxes. That means if this plan is approved, you would be left here with right around $39 million after getting this $100 million business. Now, $39 million is still a lot of money, but it's not $60 million, and it's also not $100 million. So in this case, if you are very wealthy, and we're talking about big sums, this estate tax could mean that you'd be paying upwards of 61% in taxes for the estate tax and the capital gains tax. So I guess it's actually the death tax, not just the estate tax. You'd be paying right around 61% of your income in estate taxes. Now, if you don't have a million dollars to give away after you die, then you don't gotta worry about this. So this is really more of a tax just on the wealthy as people die, but it can be a pretty significant tax implication because now we're talking about more than half of your money, especially if we're talking about big money, going straight to the government in taxes. The second major change that Joe Biden wants to make is with your income taxes. So income taxes is a thing that most people are familiar with because income taxes are the taxes that you pay on your income. You go to work, you get paid, and you gotta pay taxes. So income taxes are kind of like a strange topic because while they seem really simple, they're also really complex at the same time. I'm a licensed attorney, and this is my federal income tax textbook, my textbook that I used to learn the income income taxes. Now this one's a little bit outdated, but the concepts are still the same. And the way it works is on page one of the Internal Revenue Code, what they do is they go over all of your tax rates. They go over the tax brackets. They actually do that for the first two pages. Then for the next 2,000 pages, actually just a little bit over 2,000 pages, they go over all the exception to the income tax rules. So income taxes, while they might be the most familiar, they're not always the simplest to understand, but Joe Biden does wanna make some changes to the income taxes that you pay. Joe Biden wants to raise taxes on the rich, and the way that our income taxes work is we have a progressive tax system where the more money you make, the more money you pay in taxes. And this is differentiated through different tax brackets. So the first tax bracket right now in 2021 
is the 10% tax bracket, which says if you make between zero and 99.50, all these numbers are rounded off for simplicity, but if you make between zero and just under $10,000, you're gonna pay 10% of your income in taxes. If you make between $10,000 and $40,000 in this bracket, you're gonna pay 12%. If you make between $40,000 and $86,000, you're gonna pay 22% and on and on and on. And the highest bracket is 37%, which means if you are a single person, you file your taxes as a single person, and you make over $524,000, if you make anything more than that, you're gonna pay 37% of your income in taxes. What Joe Biden wants to do is he wants to raise taxes on the rich, and what he's saying right now is he wants to raise this top tax bracket from 37% to 39.6%, which means if you make more than $524,000 based off of today's tax bracket, you'll be paying a couple more percent in taxes. Now, there's a couple things I wanna mention about this. The first thing is that while Joe Biden says that he wants to raise taxes only on the rich, this assumes that all these other tax brackets are going to stay the same. So if you make between $0 and right under $524,000 a year, that the amount of taxes you're gonna pay percentage-wise is not going to change. The second thing that you wanna pay attention to is when people say something like, oh, if I make $524,000 a year, I'm not gonna wanna raise. Because if I make $525,000 a year, then I'm gonna be paying 39.6% a year in taxes, and nobody will wanna do that, so just keep that extra money so people are not gonna wanna work harder. Now, while I understand that nobody wants to pay higher taxes, I mean, if you did wanna pay higher taxes, just go to the IRS website and go donate them some money, that's not a true argument, because this is a marginal tax rate. What that means, is you only pay taxes, this tax rate, based off of what bracket of money you're making. Let me explain. So if you make $45,000 a year, so you're making $45,000 a year, what that means is for the first $99.50, you're gonna pay 10% between zero and $99.50. Then between $99.50 and $40,000, you're gonna pay 12% of your money in taxes. So this is from $99.50 to $40,000. And then between 40,000 and 45,000, you're gonna pay 22% of your income in taxes. So while your top tax rate is 22%, that doesn't mean you're gonna pay 22% on all $45,000. It means you're gonna pay 22% only for this bracket. So you're gonna pay 22% of your income between $40,000 and $45,000. You're gonna pay 12% between $99.50 and $40,000 and then 10% between the first $99, $50 of your income. So when we talk about marginal tax rates, just because the top tax rate goes up does not mean that your whole tax rate is gonna go up for every dollar that you earn. It's just for every dollar that you earn in this top tax bracket, which in this case is $524,000. The last thing I wanna mention about this income taxes is in our previous videos, I talked about Joe Biden's proposed changes to the social security tax system because back before Joe Biden came into office, he said that he also wanted to amend the social security system because the way it works right now is if you make between zero and just under $140,000 a year, you're gonna pay 12.6% of that in taxes to social security and after $140,000, just a little bit under that, but after $140,000, you're gonna pay $0 in social security taxes. By the way, that 12.6% number is split by you and your employer. And so then what Joe Biden said before he came into office is that after $400,000 a year, that social security tax is gonna come back. So anybody making over $400,000 a year is also gonna have to pay social security taxes on every dollar that they earn after $400,000. In this proposal that he just made, he didn't mention that. So as of now, there's no changes coming to your social security taxes. So assuming all else stays the same, it doesn't look like income taxes are gonna be changing too much unless you're a very high income earner. Then you could see another couple points added to your income taxes for every dollar that you earn in the top tax bracket. Now, before we move on to number three, I wanna mention one thing. Although I am a licensed attorney, I am not your attorney. So if you have specific tax questions, make sure you speak to a professional in your area. Now, let's move on to number three, because Joe Biden wants to make some interesting changes to tax regulations because he wants to put more money behind auditing rich people. So if you've been telling your accountant to push the limits, you might wanna stop doing that, here's why. So there's a couple of things that Joe Biden wants to do, and I'm just gonna read it to you because it's a little confusing and I wanna make sure I get it right. So the first thing that Joe Biden says is that they wanna direct about $80 billion to the IRS to increase audits of people making more than $400,000 a year. So if you're making more than 400 grand, the IRS is gonna be watching you and how you do your taxes to make sure you pay your fair share. And the second thing that Joe Biden says he wants to do is that he would require financial institutions 
to report information on account flows so the earnings from investments and business activities are subject to reporting more like wages already are. What that means is now bigger people, bigger players in the game are going to have to give way more information to the IRS, which means there's going to be more accounting fees. And the IRS is going to know more information about businesses. That way they can make sure that people and businesses are paying their fair share. So it sounds like he's encouraging banks and other financial institutions to disclose information about their high net worth clients and corporations. That way the government knows what you're doing instead of just relying on your tax forms to know what you're doing. And kind of interestingly, that's why there's been such a big push to things like cryptocurrency because people don't want the government to know what they're doing. So I wonder if this is going to accelerate people's push towards cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, especially with high net worth individuals and corporations. Something to pay attention to. So when it comes to regulations, Joe Biden wants to build a special task force of ninjas that's going to be monitoring how much money you're paying in taxes. And if you're not paying enough, be prepared to pay a fine or go to jail. The fourth change that Joe Biden wants to make is with corporate taxes. I'm going to go through this one relatively quickly. The way it works right now is corporations pay a top tax rate of 21%. Joe Biden wants to change that for corporations up to 28%. So he wants corporations to pay more money in taxes. And the thing that you gotta understand is this is just the corporate tax rate. Corporations, especially big corporations, pay taxes twice. They're called double taxation. The way it works is let's say you, I'm gonna draw you right here with a nice mustache, or for our female followers, I'm gonna draw you right here with a braid, or as we like to say in my native language, Punjabi, a goat. So you are the owner of this corporation right here, and you make money here, and now you pull out the profits. So let's assume that this corporation makes a million dollars in profits. I forgot the one. You made a million dollars in profits. The first thing you got to do here is you got to pay taxes at the corporate level. The corporation has to pay taxes because the corporation made a million dollars in profits. So the corporation is going to pay taxes right there, and now you're going to have some money left in the bank account. Now. If you, as the individual, the person with a nice mustache, or you with a nice braid, you want to pull this money out, so that way you can spend this money, you know, buy yourself a home, buy yourself something nice, you're going to pull this money out into your personal bank account, and now you're going to have to pay taxes on your individual tax returns because you just pulled out this money as profit for yourself. So now you made this money right here, so you're going to pay taxes. That's why they call it double taxes, because now this corporation will be required to pay 28% if you're making enough money. And then when you make this money here, you're also going to have to pay taxes on your individual tax returns when you pull these corporate profits out into your own personal bank account. And the fifth major change that Joe Biden wants to make, which has been stirring up the most controversy, is with capital gains taxes. Capital gains taxes are the taxes that you pay on your profits from your investment sales. So you pay these type of long-term capital gains taxes if you own a stock or real estate or any other investment for longer than a year. If you do that, you get a tax break called the long-term capital gains rate and you get to pay lower tax rates on these profits. The way it looks is like this. If you are making between zero and $40,000 a year and you sell your investment for a profit, you get to pay 0% taxes on these capital gains profits. If you make between $40,000 and $445,000, your profits are taxed at 15%. And if you're making more than $445,000, then you pay 20% in taxes on your income from your capital gains profits. This is as of 2021. Joe Biden wants to change this, especially for wealthy individuals. Now, you gotta understand, the reason why capital gains rates are so low is because of a couple reasons. One, the government wants to incentivize people to invest their money, right? The government incentivizes people to do things based on taxes. That's why they keep raising taxes on things like cigarettes because the government feels that you should not be smoking. So they keep raising taxes on that. The same thing here. They want to lower taxes on investment gains because they want people to invest their money. And if you can make more money through your investments by paying less money in taxes, then one way they can incentivize you to do that is by lowering your taxes. And so this incentivizes people to be smart with their money and invest for the future. The second reason is because these profits are from money that you already pay taxes on. Because if you go to work and you get paid, now you're going to pay taxes on this money. Now you're going to take this after tax money and you're going to put it in the stock market. You're going to invest it in real estate. You're going to put it in cryptocurrency, whatever you're going to do. You're going to invest this money. And if you invest it for the long term and you make a profit, well, now that's when you can to pay this profit. So you're investing after tax money. You already pay taxes on this money. 
And so that's another reason why the government gives you a lower tax rate because you already pay taxes on the money that you invested. This is one of the reasons why wealthy people love investing their money so much because not only now is your money making your money, but you also get tax breaks for doing that. Now, if you do want to learn more about how to manage your money and invest your money the right way, our team put together an amazing PDF on money management and investing. You can download this PDF for free when you sign up for a daily newsletter. If you want to get that PDF, I got the link to how you can download it in the description below. So now going back to capital gains rates, what Joe Biden wants to do is he wants to raise capital gains rates on wealthy people. So what he wants to do is he wants to change this 20% figure up to 39.6%. If you remember, that's going to be the top tax rate that he proposed for income taxes as well. But you're only going to be paying this 39.6% on capital gains profits if you make not 445000 but more than $1 million. So for wealthy individuals who have money in the stock market or in real estate and they sell their investments for a profit and they don't have some other exemptions, then you're going to be paying a top tax rate of almost 40% on your investment profits, which is a pretty significant jump because we're talking about almost double. And the reason why this is so significant is because when somebody is a wealthy individual and they're investing money and they have big gains in the stock market, now we're talking about multi, multi millions of dollars worth of gains because this is where wealthy people make their money. Wealthy people make their money not from their job, not from going to work. They make their money from their investments. And so now if your taxes are doubled on your investment profits, that could have huge implications because if somebody is making hundreds of millions of dollars a year from their investment profits, and now you got to pay twice as much money in taxes that's a lot of money in taxes. That's why this capital gains proposal has been getting a lot of controversy. And that's why this is something you definitely want to pay attention to. And I'll be talking about it on a YouTube channel, which is why if you haven't subscribed to a YouTube channel yet, make sure you do that. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on things you should not do when you get paid. And while you're at it, download a free money management PDF. And as always, keep hustling. The second thing you have to do is save $2,000 in a separate savings account as fast as possible. This $2,000 that you want to save needs to go in a separate savings account because this is emergency money.